Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Shafi, for, for, the, for the kind invitation. So I'll be uh, talking about uh, digital therapeutics. I'll give just a little background about myself. I studied as a medical doctor, but during the medical school, I was also coding. So uh, during those years, I came with the idea, what if I, instead of becoming a doctor and impacting a few hundred uh, patients, I write software for doctors, and then the impact might be much bigger. So that led to the foundation of Healthware, uh, a consultancy company active in the digital health space. That was 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. Now we have a few hundred people under 50 in Europe alone. Uh, what we do, we basically help large uh, life sciences and medical device companies to go to market strategically with any kind of uh, you know, product, either drug or medical device, and of course, digital health solutions. Uh, we do invest in early stage startup focusing on digital therapeutics and digital health platforms. And we basically orchestrate and participate into a global innovation ecosystem. And Shafi mentioned Frontiers, which is one of our uh, main efforts. So digital therapeutics. Uh, as of a couple of years, they've been uh, quite present in the, uh, in the news. So you heard about things like the third wave of medicine. Um, the, the, the idea behind digital therapeutics is that there's a lot of things that we can do uh, without using or in combination with uh, uh, chemical compounds. Why? Uh, WHO uh, a few years ago uh, demonstrated that more than 60% of human conditions are uh, basically determined by factors surrounding us, uh, which are related, of course, to the genome, but are about the way we live, the way beha we behave, uh, how we hydrate, how we move or not, how we eat, and so on and so forth. So digital therapeutics uh, can leverage many of those factors to, have, to foster positive health outcomes, and we'll get, dig deeper in, in, in details. So first off, a definition. So digital therapeutics are essentially patient-centric, uh, software-driven, can be software only or software in combination with drugs, interventions which are able to foster positive health outcomes and most importantly are scientifically validated. For now, with randomized uh, controlled clinical trials, just like uh, any drug would be validated. Maybe in the future we will also have other ways to validate those therapies, but for the moment we, does, we do use RCTs. Um, there are a few key factors around uh, DTX. Uh, so first off, they have to be uh, evidence-based, as I said a second ago, and this is based on high-quality software. FDA has also now a program to kind of pre-certify the software makers that are eligible to uh, basically build the digital therapeutics. Uh, those have to be optimized for uh, patient care, and the have need to have a high degree of uh, user experience. Um, user engagement, because a lot of this is about how people basically can adopt these solutions in, the li in their life flow without kind of feel they are using an artifact as an app or as a, as a solution. Um, very importantly, uh, those solutions need to be aligned with uh, basically the care pathway or the patient journey, if you, if you will. This is the model that we, that we use and that we developed over uh, the last years. As you can see, it goes from the uh, awareness uh, up to uh, the continuous care touching adherence and the, the critical steps of a patient journey. Digital therapeutics have to be aligned to this station of the, uh, uh, um, sorry, having a lot of troubles with the monitor, so I'll look a little bit on the, on the big screen. Uh, I was saying they have to be aligned to this, and by adding value to each of these stations, they can finally fulfill their goals. There are over uh, 170 digital therapeutics uh, companies out there, uh, clearly uh, startups. These are data for our good friends at Digital Health Network, one of our partners in the, in the digital health ecosystem. And those are all uh, digital therapeutics companies that have either reached clinical validation or are in the process of creating uh, clinical evidence. Uh, a couple of examples to be very tangible. Amicomed is a, a company uh, based in San Francisco who is tackling hypertension. So how they do that? So they measure your blood pressure for a week time in different times of the week. They, the, the app prompts you to measure. 
then they basically create your own uh, individual uh, uh, blood pressure, uh, basically, uh, uh, curve. And then it starts to suggest how to eat and move and exercise uh, over 90 days. And they've been publishing multiple time results. They are able to lower your blood pressure by five millimeters of mercury after 90 days, which is a big deal uh, if you think about uh, any kind of drug that is active on uh, hypertension. So this can be used alone if you need to lower the blood pressure a little bit. Could be used uh, plus the pill if you need to lower more. Uh, but basically, maybe uh, over time you will be able to start with this and then add one pill and maybe avoid uh, the second or the third one when you are basically doing uh, need to lower the blood pressure more. Another one which has been very prominent in the news because has been one of the first to achieve uh, um, basically the uh, pivoting clinical trial um, in the US, it's called Achille. Uh, it's a, a video game, as you can see, which basically stimulates a ne neuroplasticity in the brain and creates a significant, better than the corresponding drug, um, functional gain in the uh, attention disorder, ADHD. Uh, so this has been a put through clinical trial, now is basically authorized for prescription uh, in the US. Uh, and it's a video game. So that's the mode of action if you want to speak the uh, drug language. Um, in the future, we will have multiple digital therapeutics, and it's not immanageable that we will use uh, like seven or eight uh, solutions. So platforms that will be able, uh, based on individual uh, insights, to orchestrate di different digital therapeutics will be important. This is an example of a, an Italian-based one, Achilles Boston-based, uh, Amico Medi San Francisco-based. This is uh, based in Italy. It's a platform that is used by three million unique people a month in the country. Uh, basically, based on the individual uh, data profiles, suggest people which kind of uh, digital interventions and starting to do with digital therapeutics are most suitable for the potential need that those people have. And it's showing very good results already with a few, few publications. If you want to play more in the digital therapeutic space, there are a couple of key partners you can look at. One is the Digital Therapeutics Alliance. It's literally an alliance of uh, startups and large-scale pharmaceutical companies. You heard before Eugene from Bayer is one of the members. Achilles is another one uh, that basically kind of ca are coming together to help pave the way of this new uh, uh, class of therapies. So how to have to be validated? Uh, what's the... Uh, what, what are the mechanisms to basically reach evidence and maybe reimbursement for those interventions? Uh, Frontiers Health is the conference that I'm chairman of. Is, I'm basically the Shafi at Frontiers, as he is uh, uh, here at, uh, at uh, the, the Webit. Uh, and Frontiers, has, since the inception, has a full track dedicated to digital therapeutics. I tried to condense an entire you know, industry in 15 minutes. So market-wise, it's a big deal. Uh, I collected, thanks to my team, a number of uh, market researches which are telling what is the predictable uh, uh, sites of the market in terms of DTX alone. This is not digital health. This is just digital therapeutics. Uh, and as you can see, uh, they are all kind of consistent in terms of uh, uh, compound uh, growth rate and the you know, kind of final uh, numbers. Which will be the areas in digital therapies that will grow the most are clearly those that are kind of connected with the wheel that I showed in the beginning. So everything that is able to help with the, um, uh, basically cardiometabolic diseases, everything that uh, uh, is based on fostering better behavior, um, uh, CNS, uh, uh, um, chronic conditions where the proficiency of the patients is really important for the outcome of the therapy. All of these areas will be uh, probably deeply modified for better by uh, digital therapeutics interventions. Of course, digital therapeutics are one of the parts of digital health that is closer to the pharmaceutical industry or the life sciences more in general. And because basically they behave like drugs, but are pieces of software. So it's very different, and there are a lot of change needed inside the big corporations that come from a chemical background to embrace digital therapeutics. But that's a great area where those companies can engage with startups, uh, each one of them bringing uh, their own side you know, to the table. What I think is super important from a, a life scientist uh, company perspective, they are pretty good at bringing uh, uh, this kind of 
solutions to the physicians, probably not this kind, they have to learn about this one, which are software-based, that in general, they've been uh, bringing new drugs and new innovation to the physicians for uh, ages. They are very good in liaising with the institutions how to basically uh, make sense of uh, new uh, therapeutic innovations. So I believe there is a fruitful opportunity to partner between uh, digital therapeutic startups and uh, pharmaceutical companies. So what we do at Healthware about digital therapeutics, and I think this is, uh, could be of your interest, whether you are on the entrepreneur side, whether on the uh, uh, life sciences or corporate side. So basically, we created a model, which I'll super simplify here, uh, which usually works with the team at large corporations and or founding teams. It's based on the identification of what are the cases and the opportunities for a digital therapeutic intervention within a patient journey, as I showed before, because if this doesn't solve anyone's problem, it's not even worth it to look at. And that basically combines skills to build the digital therapeutics with skills to how to invest in those and create value around them. And the skills that are needed are pretty vast because you need to really start from uh, uh, user experience, design thinking skills, of course coding in a certified way. You need to understand the therapeutic area. You need to be superior at patient engagement. You need to plan your clinical validation. So there's a bunch of different things that have to come into play to build a DTX. And finally, to leave you with uh, a, a couple of follow-ups and saving uh, uh, a couple of minutes, um, we have created physical hubs located in the south of Italy by the Amalfi Coast, which is a great place to be, which is called Health World Life Hub. It's uh, located into the place where the first medical school in the world was born in the 11th century, literally that place, which has been renovated and is basically home of uh, this uh, uh, place where a temporary program can take place. So we, have, uh, we are one year into this program. We have had over 2,000 people from 15 different countries. So people come for either a week or two weeks or three weeks and kind of uh, basically fast forward projects, whether they are on the corporate side, the startup side, or both together. So consider this an open invitation and you can find more online about this. And the Frontiers, uh, 13 to 15 on November. Uh, in Berlin, it's a global gathering for 500 people. It's close number one of the tracks is digital therapeutics. So you want to learn from those that have invented digital therapeutics, the Digital Therapeutics Alliance, the first founders that have brought to the market fully validated uh, DTX, you will find all of them there. And my conclusion, um, this is really not about the tech, which I'm hearing more and more. I'm into this since 20 years, so you can understand I'm pleased to hear that this is getting so much traction. This is all about creating healthcare that is more universally affordable given the systems, no matter how they are organized, are unsustainable, and to basically provide more optimal access and care for as many as we can. As we have been democratizing travel, music, and many other industries, uh, digital health is that for healthcare. And digital therapeutics have the ca that are able to really create those positive clinical outcomes in a software as a service fashion, which ideally would be a lot cheaper and a lot more accessible and ubiquitous as basically software applications can be. And with this, I thank you so much for your attention.